I got this rug a little over 40 years ago. I was living in the East Bay. I had a neighbor who often went out of town and he'd tra like to travel a lot. He'd bring things back. And I started looking after his plants and his pets while he was out of town. And at one point he offered me this rug for would seem like a really good price. It was, I don't know, $50, $60, something like that. Not too long after I bought this, federal agents came looking for him. And it turned out he wasn't actually importing carpets, he was importing hashish. Oh boy. In the carpets. And I then didn't know what to think of the rug, because it looks legitimately worn. I've been wondering about that for most of 40 years. You're actually describing a very interesting snapshot in time where there were actually a percentage of young Americans that were going over to Afghanistan and dealing in drugs. And they were bringing back hashish and they needed a way to smuggle them into the country. Mm -hmm. And so they would purchase rugs over there from the nomads and the bazaar and they would wrap up their illicit cargo and bring them into the country as rugs. Mm -hmm. It's actually a tribal rug from the Baluchi okay. tribe, which straddles Persia and Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. And I would date it to about the 1930s. Really? Back in the 70s and 80s, you could buy antique rugs very reasonably from the tribes. Okay. And there was actually a whole economy that started up and these dealers became quasi-connoisseurs of rugs, and so when they went back for their next hashish mm -hmm. purchase, they would be more discriminating on the rugs that they would buy to wrap the hashish in, in order to maximize their return on the rugs. I would say it would retail for around $800. Really? It can very easily be restored, so if you were to spend a few hundred dollars on the rug, the value would go up commensurate with what you were spending. It would be a good investment for you okay, to do that. Okay, well, great.